Do you love it when a manufacturer takes a classic product and updates the performance in every way? Well, that's exactly what Macintosh has done with this ML1 Mark II. Hi, I'm Joe with Gramophone, and we're helping Macintosh celebrate 75 years of made in USA quality with this product, ML1 Mark II, where vintage styling meets cutting edge sound. Let's dive in. So at Gramophone, we were lucky enough to take in trade a pair of the original ML1 speakers. This pair of speakers was first shipped in 1970 by Macintosh. It was the first speaker that they ever did. And they discontinued it in 1977. So yes, it went disco in the disco era. But really modern speaker making technology has hugely leapt forward since the 70s. So the ML1 Mark II does pay homage to this original speaker but it is upgraded in every respect. So let's take a look at some of the similarities, but immediately also start looking at the differences. So the cabinet itself is absolutely beautiful, really gorgeous. This is a 66 pound speaker, so it's pretty heavy. They have got American Walnut on all sides. It's finished even in the back in, in American Walnut. And they've put a nice satin finish on it as well. I don't know how well you might pick that up on your smartphone or tablet, but when you see these in person, they really are gorgeous. So they did a great job with the cabinet. Again, homage, but way upgraded versus the original cabinet. So one thing that you'll notice immediately outside of the fact that the new grill is much more cosmetically attractive is that this grill is much more acoustically transparent than the original. You can see right through this grill when you hold it up to a bright light. When you look at the original grill, you see these slats that they had in there, which were actually blocking the sound, especially probably the high frequencies from reaching your ears in a clear way. But again, they didn't think about those things necessarily in 1970. Just one more way of looking at how speaker technology has leaped forward over the last 53 years. The second thing that becomes obvious right away is the way that the binding posts are done. Here you've got these beautiful, perhaps the most heavy duty binding posts that I've ever seen. And they're even gold plated. And you see, of course, that there are two sets of them. So we can do bi amping or by wiring, which is going to help make the mid range as clean and open as it can possibly be. Over here, of course, you notice that we're also finished completely on all sides. Like we said, over here, there's a single set of binding posts and they're relatively pedestrian ones. So yet another upgrade. Now let's talk about the Macintosh ML1 Mark II's driver complement. And this is where the fun really starts. You've got a serious 12 inch woofer right here. This speaker can produce astonishing bass given its size. And that speaker is within its own chamber inside. We'll talk about the inner workings of the cabinet in a moment. The mid range and tweeter assembly you can see is on its own plate. So this is a specially machined plate. And the reason for that is that this thing can create such vibrations that Macintosh engineers wanted to have a real structural integrity for the front baffle. So you see here, we've got two four inch mid ranges and they're flanking the upper mid range, which is a two inch soft dome, obviously, uh, upper mid range driver. The reason why they did this is because they wanted to get the crossover point up above where the average vocalist is going to be, especially with female vocals. And you will notice immediately when you put on, whether it's Linda Ronstadt or Karen Carpenter or whoever your favorite female vocalist is, how open the mid range sounds here. So we've got the two four inch mid range, the one soft dome upper mid range. So up above the three mid range drivers is the three quarter inch titanium dome tweeter. This is the same tweeter that they use in XR50 and XR100, so considerably higher end speakers uh, in the Macintosh range. Again, this entire 
group of drivers, all four of these, being on its own plate isolates it from the vibrations that might be happening within the front baffle. Very good choice on the Macintosh engineer's part because what you get out of this is a very clean and open sound stage as well. It's a speaker that performs very well off axis because of this horizontal orientation with the tweeter immediately above. At Gramophone, we really appreciate your support. So if you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. Helps us out a lot. And click that little bell icon so that you'll be notified of our upcoming video content. Let's talk about the woofer just a little bit. This ML1 Mark II is capable of amazing bass for the size of the cabinet. So how is that so? Number one, it starts with a custom designed 12 inch woofer that they did just for the ML1 Mark II. Secondly, the cabinet really is a cabinet within a cabinet. The woofer sits within its own enclosure inside the cabinet and the upper part is pretty heavily braced. Again, because the engineers wanted to keep any vibrations from the base from interfering with that wide open mid-range and high end that you get with this speaker. Macintosh has applied their low distortion, high performance technology to this woofer. And I think when you listen to it, you will look at it and think to yourself, how can they be getting that much bass out of a cabinet that's this size? So if you're a person that wants high-end performance, but you really can't accommodate a physically large speaker, the ML1 Mark II is absolutely something you're gonna to wanna to look at. Macintosh engineers custom built the crossover in this one to give you really clear vocals and mid-range notes in general without any interference with the rich bass. And of course you can buy amp or buy wire as well, and that helps. There are self-resetting protection circuits, which are great because that means overdriving these speakers at a party is typically gonna result not in a blown driver or tweeter, but results in a shutdown and then a thermal reset when the heat levels have returned to more normal level. Let's tie these last couple of segments together just a little bit. All of that attention to detail in the crossover, the way that Macintosh's engineers carefully planned out putting the mid-range and tweeters on the plate and isolating the woofer internally with all the internal bracing, what this really is gonna give you is a speaker that when the whole family is sitting on the couch, everybody's gonna get a real benefit from this horizontal dispersion that gives a realistic recreation, you could say, of listening to a band in a blues or jazz club. In other words, you don't need to be in that one sweet spot, carefully positioned, to get a really good breadth and depth of image coming from the ML1 Mark II. So sometimes with speakers, we forget to talk about dynamics. In some speakers, there's actually almost kind of a compressed sense that you get. The speaker does, itself doesn't have great dynamic range. These have dynamics for days. First off, the power handling capacity is 600 watts per channel. So some of the biggest Macintosh amps, an MC611, an MC3500, will work out just fine with these speakers. And it's actually a relatively easy load to drive because it's an eight ohm speaker. Now it is an 85 dB efficient speaker. So you'll wanna make sure you're not using, you know, a, a 20 watt tube amp or something like that. But as long as you're giving these some power, they've got a tremendous dynamic capability because they handle power so well. To learn more about Macintosh and all of our fine brands, visit gramophone.com and shop Sky by Gramophone, where you'll always get a secure checkout with fast and free shipping straight to your door. Let's sum up a little bit with the Macintosh ML1 Mark II. The first thing is, this is an absolutely beautiful speaker. When you see it in person, you'll realize what an incredible job Mac did, both with the cabinets and with the included bass, because the bass comes with the speaker. The look overall is great. Now it is, of course, a retro modern or modern retro, let's say. And some people will like that more than others but the cabinetry is beautiful. The clarity of the mid and high end is really impressive. And when you take that in combination with a tremendously punchy and powerful bass, I think you will agree that this is the best sounding speaker that Macintosh has done in a long, long time. Maybe the best sounding speaker that they've ever done. These retail for $12,000 a pair, so they're not inexpensive, 
but on the other hand, they sound terrific. And I think a fair number of people want a speaker that is not so big that it physically dominates your space, but that sounds really, really big. We think Macintosh ML1 Mark II is a winner. We'd love to meet with you. So if you can, come visit us at our stores in Gaithersburg, Columbia, and Timonium, Maryland. Today, we're shooting this video at the Experience Center, directly across the parking lot from our Timonium store. Where we've got some beautiful products beautifully displayed. And check out our Kitchen Design Center in Hunt Valley, Maryland as well. Thank you for watching this video. We really appreciate it, and we hope to see you soon.